The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Out. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, 11 o'clock till noon at 877-927-6648. Whoa, quite a session late yesterday afternoon. Um, let's go through the numbers. So first of all, thank you to our host. Great programming earlier on. Hopefully, we're going to be able to keep that standing up here in this hour and then all the way through to the rest of the day. The Dow is up at uh, 40, uh, 43 at 21,188. That makes it a new all-time high. And the um, action that I've been discussing as a possibility, I wasn't sure it was going to happen, was that the NDX, the, the NASDAQ 100, would make new highs. And then, because the S&P went to a, a, a new high, it would then drag the Dow, the New York Stock Exchange, and I'm not sure yet whether the IWM, if we have to wait for the Russell 2000 to get there. Certainly the MDY, that's the mid caps, are starting to get very close. We'll, we'll talk about that right now. Let me just actually, it's even better if I run the numbers. Let me run the numbers. The E-mini e is not participating all that well. It's up $3.50. Uh, $3 but the breakout... And this is so fascinating. Every once in a while, I get a discrepancy. And I have to decide, is that discrepancy going to be a discrepancy that gets resolved so that there's consistency, or is it going to be a divergence? Let me show you what I mean. The E-mini went to a peak F in the Chapman Wave methodology at 2404.50 on the 16th of May. Pulls back really sharply. Remember the 400-something point down day, the Dow down day? Um, and then... At 2344.50, takes a turn for the upside and runs and breaks to a new high, 24.1775, goes sideways for four days, and then bam, yesterday, late afternoon, it spirals up, and now it's because it's taking out that G slash A. In the Chapman Wave methodology, you can't go higher than a G. You have to think that it's a, it's a, a restart somewhere, uh, or you might have missed a peak, but you don't, there's no H. So here it is, and there's no other way to count it, but it's in leg B. However, if you look at the SPX.X, this is the S&P. Where did that disappear to? If you look at the S&P, what we've got is that peak F pulls back uh, from the 16th of May, goes to the G slash A. This is the B, and that con confirms. However, when you look at the trading vehicle, the SPY, that at 240.67, at the peak on May the 16th, pulls back really sharply to 235.43. And then what does it do? It rallies and goes to an F. And then everything looks fine, an F. But the stochastic I said yesterday at 93%, 94%, that is really good action. You have to get a really sharp pullback to get the stochastic into the 87% area, let alone below 80 then we spike to the upside, spike to the upside again today. I have no choice but to say that this is going to be the B. So all of a sudden, the spy that was lagging, a laser, is uh, now everything's in sync. And that suggests to me you can't, in the Chapman Wave methodology, because you're always looking for at least a D in a brand new buy mode, you cannot get an. an uh, a top until you get to that leg D, at least the leg D. This should be bullish going into next week. Isn't that interesting? The weekly chart has pushed higher it's in leg E. Let's get, let me show you this quickly. I'm going to go back to the, the E mini. And we've gone to a peak C in the 120 minute chart. Magni is still good. Stochastic's at 84% good, but it's pulled back from the 95% area it was earlier. I think there will be a D. I think you'll pop, pop to a new high. Um, above 2437.25 and that could extend into next week all right i want you to do that now let me go to the qqq series um it's extending the move up 82 cents at 142.86 today 
the stochastic the MACD is strong. Now the MACD is much is, is as, as strong as it had been before. The stochastic is at 95.69 percent. That is really good. I've got two indicators that are suggesting that we could go maybe just a little higher. Then we've got to be careful in the short term. So the, the weekly chart is still very strong and 94% uh, in the stochastic. I can get rid of this 120-minute chart right now because I believe this is a brand new leg B, and the 120-minute chart. So everything is kind of um, breaking out to the upside that had been lagging, not everything, but almost everything. Let's go to the IWM. The IWM is right now at 139.98 of a dollar oh three. This is the iShares, Russell 2000 ETF. No. Yeah, this is the Russell. Um, I, sorry, IWM is the Russell 2000. And it's in leg B, gray leg B, because it's under the previous high. And what I said before is it's really strange to go to an all-time high to a peak C minus. <laughs> that just did not feel right. Uh, and yet it was failing. It was pulling back. It held the trend line. Rally get, rally get, and now it looks very much like we're going to go to a leg E in the weekly chart, and we're going to finally reactivate that peak C minus to a peak C, and that's going to become at 141.83. If it hits the next week, which I think it will, it's going to become leg D. All the little duckies are going to be lining up. All right, let's go on. Now we get, what I want you to look at is the MDY. The MDY is the mid cap. Is that the mid cap? I don't know if it's called the mid cap 400, but it's the mid cap uh, uh, deposit receipts trading at 318.98. It has gone to a leg C. It did that this morning. The cup formation in the weekly chart is holding very well, holding the nine period exponential moving average. And I suspect that the mid MDY um, will be going to, oh, I, I, it was a question as to the wave count. Let me, uh, let me just check it out here. I don't know. Uh, where, where, where was the wave count? Oh, here it is. No, wait, what was the question again? Uh, Peaky and the Denny had a very good question, and I said I'd get back to it. Uh, peak C will not stand. Bring on the leg, Peak D. Um, all right, I'll, uh, I don't remember. I'll, I'll have to think it through because it was that you, you had missed a count uh, a, a, basically a restart count. I, I just can't remember offhand. Meantime, MDY acting very nicely right now, and it's going to go higher. Um, the breakout yesterday, I don't care what the news was, I don't care what the issue is, uh, we had been short the Dow for, for, for a couple of months in, in uh, a short, uh, small short position, and we I don't know if we've, we were one penny from being stopped out. I'm absolutely sure it had to be stopped out. Um, nope, we want, we're still short the, the Dow. Um, we'll be taken out by one penny. So all I'm, oh, it was the XLV. Thank you. Yes. So the MDY is going to, um, I'm pretty sure at this point that it is also going to make a new all-time high in a leg D in the monthly. So the question here was, in fact, LXLV. I'll do it now because it's technical Friday and I completely forgot who. Uh, what, what it was. This is what we were looking at. The low that was made is 65.96 in the XLV, the Select Healthcare Spider Fund, the week of the 4th of November at 65.96, went to a spiral up to a leg A. But that became an A minus when it came back to 60, 60, 6.97. So a little A, then a B, and then a C and a D. It's in leg in the week. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Dick, which is our Dallas. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank. 
Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. The Select Healthcare Spider Fund. I got this in leg B. I'm not calling it an alternative wave count, I'm calling it B because the stochastic's rounding at 89%. The MACD is good, and the weekly chart is still positive in leg D. And at 77.40. Uh, back in uh, July of 2015, that was the high. It pulls back to 56.63. That's a really big I've been doing better. I've been down. checking my own stuff. Over um, this oh, this. we've got a caller right there on the line. I didn't even see that. And I'm just going to do this for real quickly. And uh, actually, we'll go right to Victor in Paramus, New Jersey. Victor, how are you? Good, good. I'm looking at a stock called HOS. They beat it up. They got a lot of cash. I don't think they're going to go out of business. But if it's a New York company, does that have to do a reverse split? It's a 158 HOS. So They've been around the since 93. So, no, I'm so saying, this, do they have to reverse split because they're trading at 158? Or oh, oh, and would you buy that well, stock? You know, that's really a, I believe that that's a choice. And what they do is they reverse split because they know that they funds are not going it. to buy them if they're less than five bucks. So it's very difficult. Maybe the policy has changed. So what I would say to you is, let me just do this real quickly. A... Uh, B, C, D. It's been around since 90, 1993, e. the company. You know, I, I remember the name Hornbeck Offshore Services. I, I just mm -hmm. I do remember the name from way back. This is a stock that has incredibly big moves on a percentage mm -hmm. basis. But what's happened is it's just I'm afraid that this really could be going out of business from the it's at the dollar fifty seven. I'd be really careful and I I can't stand like dry dry ships when they do the reverse splits almost like the the uh, the ETFs the three times or two times long they do the reverse split next thing you know yeah. is back to where it was but and it all the balance happened. sheet. They got a so lot the, of, they got a lot of cash. So yeah they Does have a, they anything? have a lot of yeah, it, it, if they have a lot of cash on, on one end, that's very good. But if you dig deep enough, sometimes what you find is that the debts that are not that you don't really know about or you don't read about, mm -hmm. the debts are are greater than the that the cash position. I don't know if that's the case, but what I would do is I, I'd say to you, as oh, a spec you. as a speculative stock, the way that it's just been constantly hitting the nine period moving average since it really broke down back in April of this year. It was in the, in the, in the 4.30 area, now it's trading at 1.56. I would just be, I wouldn't even treat it as an option. I'd just say, you know what, write it a little, uh, uh, 
a little sticky note. Put that mm -hmm. there, say 1.56. I was going to buy it at 1.56 and then put the note, stick it upside down on your computer. I mean, we use the tape so that you can stick it on your computer at the top of the computer and it's looking at you. Then you'll forget about it. And in two weeks' time, have a, have a look at it again and let's see what happens. That's the only way I would do this. And I'll tell you why. It might just pop a little bit, but the weekly mm -hmm. chart is so bad. The monthly chart is so bad that it, it just see it's speaking of financial, I would say financial disaster. So I don't think I'd, I'd want to, you know, sometimes I'd say, you, you know what you can do? You can just buy a little bit, treat it as an option, as, as a non-expiring option, and just leave it. I'm just saying to you, rather, rather not buy it, put, write it down on a sticky paper, say on the 2nd of June, uh, 2017, HOS was trading 1.56, and don't nothing else. You don't have to say I was going to buy it. I was going to sell it. I was gonna, just <laughs> keep it there. And in a week or two, hey, let's look at it again. I tell you what. I tell you what. I changes. Yeah. I no. I would buy it if over a three-week period it rallied mm -hmm. towards one dollars one dollar and eighty-two cents to two dollars and twenty. And when it pulled mm -hmm. back, it never came back. Uh, it never closed under the. Oh, man, I don't know. It didn't close under 175. I'd say then I'd start looking at it. But this is just a little too dangerous because you can see what's happened. Every single week. Well, 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 oil rig stocks. If you look at a rig or DO or CLS, they're all hitting yeah. 2009 lows right now in the stock market. I think it's going to follow, and then oil is going to take off, and we're going to be in a really bad recession if you and I'll blame it on Trump. That's what I think they're saying. Yeah, you, know, you, you, might, you might be correct, but I'm looking at crude oil right now down a dollar ten. You know what I would do? I'm going to say to you, if you want, if you could, you have to treat it as a, as a gamble. And I would prefer mm -hmm. to have no, something that has. I'd rather have something that has the upside potential because I'm looking at a yeah, candle yeah. or something that says, you know what, back in February it had a a 40 percent move. I just I'm looking at this now. And I don't see anything. It's had 40% declines every single mm -hmm. every single week. No, I, this yeah, is not, I, it's too like, tough. I, I looked at DO and RIG. They were like at, they were uh, like uh, in 2001, they're almost half, the, you know, they're almost down to 2001 prices. Correct. So now, I, I don't do, know how much, I, they're not going to go out of business, I don't think. I don't know if they're going to go out of business. They usually do have, have managed to hold cash positions. But I tell you what I am a little concerned about. I'm concerned that there could be a rally that doesn't hold. So that rig, mm -hmm. or let's go to DO, which is Diamond Offshore, trading at 1148, down 39 cents. There's a nice candle from uh, two days ago, turn around, and then there's a good candle yesterday. What you really mm -hmm. wanted to see is the candle from yesterday, which closed at the low of uh, Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday was. Ten dollars and eighty-three cents. The high of yesterday was twelve dollars and twelve cents. That's a big percentage gain. But look what happened today. It's already giving back half yeah, the gain. All back. So it's the it's speed. Just, I'm, I'm just not, decorating. End of the month, yeah. decorating their portfolio. Yeah, and I'm I'm just a little concerned that what they're doing is they they're desperately trying to pop the move, and every time they try to pop it, look at that big candle. Look at the candle yeah. of the fifth of May. Uh, looks like day the before, institutions are selling it. They're pumping it and dumping it, it looks, every day. It looks to me like the heavy hitters are actually getting out of this now. Yeah, that tells yeah, me yeah. that you, you're absolutely right. I'd keep my eye on this. Maybe in a week, maybe in two weeks' time, there's some kind of a base. And who knows what reason? Out of the blue, there's a decent rally. Then what I would do yeah. is I would say to you, then you could put a little bit of money into HOS, just purely speculation. But I want yeah. to see that the sector itself is starting to move higher. And that's different. Okay. Then I would say to you, then you could choose DO or RIG and say, hmm, nice, good chance of a 15 to 18 percent bounce because most of the selling seems to be done for this phase. I just don't want to see it rally and then take out the lows that it's making this week. That'll be terrible. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Bye. Okay, thanks for calling. Always appreciate it. Victor in Paramus, New Jersey, uh, looking at HOS. Uh, so this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to show you a couple of things here. I had a question earlier on if I would look at the New York Stock Exchange, NY, dollar, NYA, dot X. There you go. Um, in leg, E in the daily. 
uh, making a new all-time high. You see, this is how we're doing it, one by one. That, that's, see, I, I just had an email. Uh, Kevin says, uh, you call it interesting. I call it a horrible call. And a huge miss and a thousand point move. So I don't think he, uh, that can be faulted. Uh, that's correct. I uh, missed a thousand point move there because of the speed of the, the gaps to the upside, yes. But really, if you think about it, um, the technique that I have was able to, to, to give a 13 week correction in the Dow that uh, under every other circumstance based on the monthly charts, it should have gone to new highs. So the technique itself was pretty accurate. My anticipation of the speed and the, the move to the upside, that was, that was poor. And I should have probably just jumped on at the double bottom that the Dow was making. So yeah, I, I, I don't disagree. Uh, I'm just explaining that the technique itself wasn't necessarily at fault. My reading of it was. So New York Stock Exchange, new all-time high. Dow, all-time high. We're looking at uh, whether the IWM is going to be able to do it. I'll be right back. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Dow's up 39. S&P is up 3.83. Let's finish our little journey through these, uh, the trek through these different uh, indices. Now, what's really important is that looking at the uh, New York Stock Exchange, this is the 2000 stocks, really an important index. The, the, it's in a leg D. Now, my, my biggest concern here is that the monthly charts have gone very quickly from a C to a D or a D to an E. Look, the, look at the, on the right side, this is the, the monthly chart right there, daily, weekly, monthly. Now, keep a look on this, keep an eye. So we go Dow, new leg E, just started today. 
leg E. Very quick, D to E. In the chap wave, you've always got to be a little careful when that happens. Look at the S and P, S, P, X, dot X. I always type that in. It doesn't seem to pick it up over there. I don't know why that happens. I'll do it again. S, P, X, dot X. There it is. Leg D, we're waiting for the C to go to a D, and it's just gone to the D. All right? So, so the technicals are very good in the monthly charts. However, um, let me show you something else. If you go to the... Um, uh, we've gone one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. Oh, if you go to the IWM, this is still peak C. It hasn't gone to the D. That gives it a little bit more room. It's not much in points. 140.16 right now to go to the previous high of 141.82, uh, a dollar and a half just about. I don't think that's, a, that's, a, that's an achievable uh, accomplishment if it can do it next week, and I believe it should. If you're looking at the um, XMI, XMI, and this is, uh, most people don't look at it. I've been looking at it for a lot of years. Um, it's gone in the, in the weekly chart, to a monthly chart, it's gone to a D, and it looks like it wants to go to that E. And this is the major market index of 20 important stocks. So as you go one by one, you're looking at a situation where we're getting really close to monthly legs D and E. Now, the reason why I bring this up is if you look at the SMHs, that's the SM, semiconductor index, kind of it's, it's almost as if it's apologetically going to new highs. It's going to new highs, all-time highs right now, but it's only in leg C in the monthly chart, and that is a very big positive. So as I'm looking at this, I'm saying, you know what, we have time to go a little higher over the coming into Wednesday, maybe Thursday of next week. And then I think we've, then there are a lot of things that say, okay, now let's look and see what's going on. Why? Because if you look at the TLT, that's the Lehman 20-year uh, T-bond treasury bond ETF, look at this. It's at 125.68. When it was down here in the 123s, 122s, um, I said, you know, it's actually looking very good. There's a left side, right side price time match, a V-shaped pattern you know, that I said to subscribers in the in the um, daily chart. And that's suggesting that the lowercase h that it goes to a lowercase m that I spoke about a while back, uh, I drew it in as a schematic for the... Um, as a schematic for the weekly chart, if it breaks out and it actually closes the week at any week above the high that was made back in April the 21st, that changes the pattern completely. All of a sudden, you're into this really ugly candle of um, 11th, that's November the 11th. Huge down candle, 130.75 open, goes to 131.21, and then boom, down to 121.65. We're almost halfway into it. And that's the reason why we actually long this uh, for subscribers to my opening call. And um, what I'm really looking at here is that the there's a chance that I'm looking at softness in the economy. And if you look at the uh, my triple yield chart, look, lower lows and lower highs. The 30-year, lower lows and lower highs in the 10-year uh, T-note yield, lower lows and lower highs in the 5-year. This says to me that what we're really looking at in... Um, in the yield situation is that things are not as good as the Fed would like. I think the Fed's going to have a terrible time raising rates. If you look at the WOOD, I've been talking about this for a week, it's gone to new highs. This is the Global Timber and Forestry ETF, new, new recovery highs um, in leg F, I'm calling it F for now, and the high HEX, the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index, has gone to new recovery highs, not all-time highs, but new recovery highs. This is very, very important. It's gone to a leg E. So when I'm putting the whole potpourri together, I'm saying what a mixed market. With insectors, you've got some stocks doing very well and some stocks doing very badly. Within the whole market, you've got some sectors doing well and some are doing very poorly. And that says to me that this bifurcated market could continue just a little while longer. And we will see that if the TLT, which is in leg D, that's what you always look for, if it starts to stall this coming week and it cannot break into the 126.80, 127.30 area, suddenly it starts to pull back sharply, that's going to say, okay, maybe yields have gone low enough and they're going to try to rally. I'm not sure how the Fed's going to work this plan. It's got two weeks to do it. I think it's two weeks, yeah. Um, and I'm going to be watching that really closely. And if you look at the VIX index, this is the silliest thing because all you have to do is over the, all the years say, the VIX this is not the VIX. This is the VIX. The VIX below the teens 
is very bullish and just stay you can just stay long i mean that probably that's the easiest thing then what do you do with these sudden spirals to 16 that kind of gets you trapped you get out and then you can't get back in so all i'm going to say is that watch the vix in the next two weeks if at any point the vix starts to trade at 11.80 12.30 and the dow starts to close down triple digits and the s p closes down 17 points or more and it can't do it one day. It has to do it two or three days in succession with the VIX holding in the high number, actually starting to move to the 13s and holding in that area. That's when we're going to get a deeper, a deeper pullback. Um, so I, uh, a couple of things going on. Um, it, within the context of what the Fed can do and can't do, they obviously have been talking about something for a long time. They might want to stick to the plan regardless, and that might be what derails the market. But the fact that we've rotated into going to new highs, um, it looked, and the reason, only reason why I wanted to stay in that short position for, for the Dow was because when I looked at uh, certain areas, if you look at, I mean, look at the financials. If you look at the XLF, uh, it's just stuck in a range towards the lower end of the range, not breaking down, but not breaking up. If you're looking at... Um, certain areas that are really a part of a bull market that you normally expect, you would expect the banks to be really rallying. So this is going to be very important. XLF below 22.30, uh, it's at 23.42 right now. Not good action at all. Uh, XLF financial S&P spider fund above 23.80 says, hey, not bad. That's good action right now. It's at 23.43. Can't do anything. So there's a rotation. Then I was asked about which is better, Ford or General Motors. You know, General Motors seems to have the, a, a larger product. Um, the, the cars that I see on the road that my eye drifts to and says, hey, that's, that's quite a nice style. More General Motors now than Ford. I'm not happy with the Ford designs. But that's my own personal opinion. So I do look at the makes all the time as I'm driving along. And I, I must tell you, I think General Motors, I don't know about their bookkeeping because, you know, it's, it's a complex thing. But General Motors seems to me to be the company that should be the one that really starts to move higher. Their Buick division is doing well. Their Chevy division, nice ratings they're getting. Nice, I like the style quite a bit. I, I think there's, there's a change that Cadillac needs improvement in their quality. Styles improve tremendously, but quality is not. Um, yeah. So uh, my, my opinion right now is that uh, General Motors, out of Ford and General Motors, probably General Motors is the one that I'm looking at as, as perhaps has a greater uh, upside, but actually Ford, uh, Chrysler, Fiat is the one that has the best chart back. I'll be back. That's a 51 s and supply. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. So let's just go back to this. I'm looking at Fiat Chrysler. And I must say, when I go past the dealership just uh, what is it, uh, about a mile away, maybe less, um, I just see them get, uh, get, uh, the change of color in the cars. <laughs> Every week, they are selling. They must be selling a lot. And everywhere you look, people have Jeeps. So that it, it's got nothing to do with the, whether the Consumer Report likes it or not. They get lousy ratings, but they seem to be selling both Chrysler and Jeeps. And that's what the, the chart seems to say. So chart-wise, I think that the FCAU... Fiat Chrysler um, Autos is trading at 11.04, down 10 cents. This is, this is a nicer chart, I must say. Um, okay, so a um, couple of questions I had here. One is the DXD. Is the DXD, what was the exact question? Um, have a small position. Is this a place to add? You know what, I'm going to suggest um, this is the two times short the Dow, trading at 12.07, 12.07 cents. I'm just going to suggest that at this particular point, I wouldn't add, if you want to hold it and keep it, that's, I think that's fine. I think it could go down to $11.50, $11.30. We are really close, I think, to at least some kind of consensus where the week, the daily charts are going to get to Ds or Es. Okay, so let's, let's, I'm just going to say don't do anything right now. In fact, I would even say to the DXD, I'd put a stop. You can always come back in. But anyway, that, that's if you want to hold it as a, a cushion or as a insurance, that's one thing. But um, as a new position, no, not yet. Uh, Rich in Portland, how are you? Fine, Basil. Thanks for taking my call. My pleasure. I was calling about uh, uh, the BTG. I, it's the number two position in the GDXJ. Oh. I was looking at it as a possible entry here, but they're not setting the world on fire yet. Do you see any reason on the chart to go into this? You know, this is a very interesting thing. I, I don't think I've ever looked at BTG, B2 Gold Core, trading at $2.50, up $0.08. Cents. I quite like the sideways pattern. I like the MACD rallying. I, the stochastic says that if the stochastic at 64% can actually rally towards 72%, this thing will break and test, should break and test the recent high that was in April, uh, May the 17th at 259. The moment it does that, then 262 is the 200-period moving average. That's where I think it's going to target. Yeah, this is what I'm thinking. I'm going to suggest, I'm looking at the weekly, I'm looking at the monthly, and I must say that the sideways action, since gold has pulled back, this has held very nicely, and it's a good candle today. It's actually up 3.28%. I'm going to suggest that you start a position right here. Um, if you're prepared to start a position, but I don't think I would say to you, add or anything, I'd just start the position. The reason why is the candle of the 24th with a low of 2.49. I know it doesn't sound like much. It's only three cents. 
but it's a big percentage. So if you're prepared to ignore the percentages right now, the way it's acting, I do like it. If it was actually at the low of the Dow, I'd say, you know what, I'd have to wait a little bit. I want to see it over the nine period moving average. 247 is the nine period moving average. And let me just check. I think I've got the wrong number. The low, of course, is 235. I was just going to say that doesn't make sense at all. The low is 235 that I'm looking at, the low of the 24th. Now, if you're prepared to, to start a position and within the context of um, looking out longer term, saying that this is a position that has the chance, and if it can break it in the next two weeks, if it can get above 262, the weekly chart really does improve, and so does the monthly. 259 would be the next, uh, uh, sorry, 259 is the next level of resistance in the monthly. 257 is the resistance in, in the weekly. If as soon as it gets to the 262, 263 area, it's kind of cleared that. So I would say to you, start a position right here. I wouldn't get too carried away because it, it could still be stuck in a trading range. Start your position. And if, what's today, Friday? So if, if by Tuesday afternoon to Wednesday, now let's go Wednesday. If by Wednesday, anytime Wednesday, if it hasn't taken out today's low and it's acting very well, it hasn't taken out the high of the 17th of 259, but it's holding very nicely, I'm going to say, call me again and let's see if you actually want to add another small position. But I would start a small position here if you're prepared to look out a little bit longer saying this one does have the potential to move to the 260s and that's really good. But as I stop, I'm afraid to, that I'd have to say to you, not even the low of the day today of 243, uh, I'd give it a little bit more room as a stop in your initial entry point. Does that help you a little bit? Uh, yes, it does, Basil. I, w I was just looking at all of the different gold stocks, and as a junior miner, this one looked like it had potential, but like you said, it's been stuck in a sideways movement. Well, which is, which is quite good, considering uh, what, what, yeah, the JDX Junior, JDX Junior, trading at 31.90 at 56 cents, has been making lower lows. This one's stuck in the sideways trading ranges. As, as a stock, it's doing nicely. So that's the reason why I did. I, I do recommend you could start your position. Okay, Basil. Okay, thank you for calling. Always appreciate it. Rich All right, have a good weekend. Again. Have a good weekend too. So let's look at this, folks, because I don't want to run out of time. I need to do a couple of things here. Uh, I had a question about Julie asked. Uh, okay, crude oil. Let's just do this. I didn't get to crude oil. Crude oil is trying its best to establish some kind of a base right here on the very short term, like the 120-minute chart. I'm afraid to say that the way the MACD is stochastic are acting and the weekly chart, I, it doesn't mean to say it has to crash and go much, much lower. What I said before is that I think it's stuck between a trading range of about 46 to 45 on the downside and maybe 50 to 51 on the upside. And until it, it, it tells us that it wants to break out of that range, just think of it as a trading range. So I still see a little bit further to go. If I look at the SCO, which is sometimes for me a clue, where did it go? SCO right now is trading at uh, 41, up 64 cents in leg C. And it, the technicals suggest that it wants to go a little bit higher. It doesn't have to go all the way to that peak F top. This is the uh, SCO is the uh, ProShares Ultra Short Bloomberg, I think, crude oil, and it's uh, the high of the 4th of May was 45.39. It doesn't have to go there, but I think it, it's going to try to get deeper into the candle of the 10th of May, and that has a high of 40, well, 43.09, 43.04. Well, let me just say that I think it wants to get into the 42s, and today's high is 41.84. So that's SCO. So I think that uh, the, the weekly chart is um, A, B, C, uh, am I correct? Yes. It's in, in peak C. I think it's going to try to get towards a D. It doesn't have to get to the D, but I think crude oil has further to go to the downside. Maybe not by much, but it does, I think, still needs more downside activity. Uh, next question was on the on the, on the TNX, TNX.X. That's the, um, if I can just get it here, TNX.X. There we go. Yeah, look at that breakdown from that peak D high. And remember, I decided that I did this on air. I said I'm going to call this a phantom Chapman wave peak right here in the 10-year uh, yield uh, at 24.16 on the 9th of May. 
and 2416 on the 10th. I said, I'm going to call that a phantom peak C so that I can get to the D quicker. I'm prepared for the downside. Another reason why we want you to go long um, bonds. So I hope that helps you. Um, I'll be back for the final segment. And yep, Basel Trap and Dow's up 62, S&P's up six. And turning out to be a good day there for the uh, markets. I'll be back. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Learn how to trade options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade, Thinkorswim, next on TFNN. So what I didn't finish before is silver is in leg D right at the 200-period exponential moving average. So SLV... SLV is a silver ETF, the iShares, and that has gone right above the 200-period uh, exponential moving average, and that is at A, B, C, and D. And at D, we expect other things to happen. They don't have to, but that's where they can. And what it's saying is that breaking above Makes the 1657 right now up 19 cents in the silver contract, in the silver iShares. 1632 to 1614, key support level. And 16, I put it at 1675 to 1710 will be the resistance. But the MACD is good in stochastics at 91.20. SLW, I haven't looked at for ages. That's silver wheat. And what happened to it? Does it not exist anymore? SLW? Uh, somebody give me a silver. Let's look at PAAS, uh, PAS, Pan American Silver. 
um, not doing anything. It's up nine cents, but it's stuck in the range. I don't like when the silver stocks and gold stocks are not acting where, where the, the metals actually lead. I mean, I shouldn't say I don't like it. That's just the way it is. I prefer for the, the stocks themselves to be leading because that's activity. So let me just say that I'm watching it real closely. I don't quite believe the move in gold and silver just yet, as if to say it's a breakout to, to really spiral much higher. I, that's my thinking. We'll see if it's going to change that. Um, so that's what I wanted to say there. Let me just quickly uh, do a quick update here. So the semiconductors at the high of the day, 86.69. Look at these tiny little candles. Little can, little can, little can. But they're all making higher highs and higher lows. That's why you only get a leg E, then a peak E, after maybe 12 of these candles. When they give back, they give back, boom, like that. When they these tiny little candles on the upside. So my thinking here is that we're looking at the continuation of the rotation to make new highs in the indexes that haven't done it yet. So be prepared. So when you're talking about shorting right now, I'm stepping aside. I'm not going to, I don't need this. Um, I'd rather have patience. I think there will be time. But at the same time, I'm looking at the monthly charts and say, hey, man, those monthly charts were really powerful. Why don't you just, you know, buy long and stay long? Because that's what they say. But at the same time, when you look at the the technicals, the technicals are suggesting that the next decline in the, I'm talking about a market decline, could actually be quite powerful, quite sharp, quite powerful. Maybe not that long in duration. It's either going to be time or price. I'm not sure if it's going to be both. So um, we're not there yet now because we're breaking to new highs. So I just wanted to complete that thought that I don't want to stand in the way of this freight train right now. Maybe the next pullback, I'll even think of buying at least something. Uh, for leverage and just try to ride it for the next uh, four days, five days to the upside, then we have to make decisions. But the reason why I'm becoming, the reason why I was cautious was because I didn't think that the queues would actually extend as much as they did. I thought that that big sell-off back on the uh, 16th, 17th of May, I thought that was going to be a far more serious and the market just ignored it when it continued back up. Now I think we've got to watch it closely at 95%. I'm not yet prepared to go short the queues. I want to see what happens in my wave count. And I've got an alternative wave count that's either G or a B. So I don't want to mess with that. So I'm just I'm saying quite clearly that the bias, my eye says the bias right now is to let this play out to the upside. We do have some longs. We let them play out. We have, uh, um, uh, I'm not sure. I think we still have our one short. I don't know if it's been taken out. And, and that's going to be it for now. So... It's very important when I, I oh yeah well okay XLU was asked about XLU had a sharp pullback from the high today but it's still at 54.26 they did a high of 54.63 we do remain long from the 51s just I want to see how this plays out and I've got it as a leg C so there again it's a kind of an interest rate conception uh, with the technical still very strong so but keep in mind we could still go higher into next week that's what I'm saying check out my opening call my and. Um, have a great weekend. See you all on Monday. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.